Hey everybody, some gadget guy here taking a look at a cool new app Microsoft just dropped off today for Windows Phone and Android users. We are looking at none other than Hyperlapse Mobile, a hyperlapsing app. And basically that means it's a time lapse with more movement. We've seen another app with a very similar name dropped off by Instagram. They have Hyperlapse from Instagram. But this is Microsoft Research really trying to analyze video and smooth out the shakiness that we can sometimes see with handheld video, GoPro video, or video shot from our phones. And this is an editing algorithm, is when you first fire up the app, you're presented with an option to either record a new video or import an existing video. Now, I'm obviously sitting here in my office, so we don't want to record a new video, but we can import a video. There is a limitation on this app that if you're shooting 4K video, you cannot edit it through the mobile version of Hyperlapse, but there is a desktop version, which we're going to talk about later in this video. So if we import an existing video, go to my gallery, and we're going to go to download because I normally shoot 4K video on the Note. Now this is actually a video pulled from my Lumia 640 review. The Lumia 640 XL only shoots 1080p video. But once we import a video, we're given just a couple quick settings that we can use to edit. For example, if we want to end the video sooner, we can move this little slider here on the right. Or if we want to start the video off at a sooner point, we can move this little slider here on the left. But once we've designated the time, we hit this little check mark here. It's going to import that whole video, do a little scan. This is happening in real time. This is approximately a 40 second video, which then we're gonna be given options to change up how fast it's going to play back at 4X speed, 8X speed, 16 or 32X speed. But right now, Microsoft is going through their algorithm to try and smooth out some of my movement. This was actually a walking test. So there are a lot of really stuttery footfalls moving throughout this video. And the 640XL does not have image stabilization, so it is really shaky video. All right, we've scanned 100%, and here we've got playback at 4x. I think I can even drop it down to 2x. I wonder what happens if we drop it down to 1x. Oh, this is really interesting, dropping it down to 1x. This seems to act as some kind of software-style image stabilization. That's really cool. But we can crank it up to 2x, see what that's going to look like, bump it up to 4x. We can see it's actually doing a pretty good job of reining in some of my footfalls. We can bump it up to 8x. It's going to start gliding even just a little bit more. Bump it up to 16. And this is just a preview. This isn't fully rendered video yet. And lastly, we can hit 32. And at 32, we're flying. Because at 32x speed, it's going to take my 40 seconds of video, and I'm only going to get about one and a half seconds of output. But let's scale this back to 16, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to produce that video. So now that it knows, it's actually going to do a full new render on that video. And now we can share it. If we tap here, it's going to give us just the standard Android options for sharing a video. Uh, we can save another speed so I can come back in and say, you know what, 16 wasn't quite what I wanted. Maybe I want to bump it down to 8 or maybe I want to juice it up to 32. And saving 32 should be even faster because it's just less video to save. Or from here, we can come back in from scratch and start a new project, either again recording or importing a video. So jumping out of the app and going into my gallery, we can actually take a look at the difference between the original video shot and then what Hyperlapse did to that video. So here's just a quick sample of what I originally shot on the Lumia 640. And you can see it's very shaky, it's very jittery. This is a phone without optical image stabilization and every single one of my footfalls, even though I'm trying to walk as fluidly as possible, I'm doing a really geeky marching band step, is causing the camera to react and we can see all of the shakiness and the jerkiness. And moving over to the Hyperlapse video, it is noticeably smoother. You can still see the occasional little twitch or little jump, but considering it's editing video that wasn't even shot on this phone, it's doing a remarkable job of smoothing that out. Now, checking out the video at normal speed, this is a remarkably smoother effect for what I pulled off of that Lumia 640. It's really impressive performance, as according to Microsoft, what they're doing is they're trying to create more of a 3D model of the video you've already shot to then try and eliminate the wiggle or jank of moving through that 3D model. When you compare it to the Hyperlapse app from Instagram, which is currently only available on iOS, Hyperlapse from Instagram seems to rely more on the iPhone's natural software image stabilization. But Hyperlapse from Instagram will only let you go up to 12x speed. It won't let you go any faster 
faster than that. But Instagram's hyperlapse will not let you import a video like Microsoft's will. So with Instagram's hyperlapse, you have to know in that moment that you want to shoot a time-lapse video, whereas with Microsoft's option, you can actually take any of your older videos and run it through this editing system. Now, while Microsoft's solution here definitely looks more affected, like some kind of software editing has happened here, I do think we end up with a smoother overall representation of this scene than we do on Instagram's solution, which really just seems to be a simplified tool for time-lapse video. Now, currently, both the Instagram and Microsoft mobile versions of their respective hyperlapse apps can only save 720p video, but Microsoft's desktop version can save 1080p video at up to 60 frames per second. And for those of you shooting 4K video from your GoPros or from your phones, there is a desktop version of Hyperlapse that you can run those video files through. And, and to my eye, I think the desktop version does a slightly better job of smoothing out some of the movement, especially once we start cranking up speed 16x, 32x. But right now, Microsoft is watermarking all of those videos, so that's kind of a bummer. Now, Hyperlapse is brand spanking new, and it is available on both Windows Phone and Android, but it's currently in a pretty limited beta. On the Android side, Microsoft is supporting the Samsung Galaxy S6, the Note 4, the HTC One, M8, and M9. And on the Windows Phone side, I was able to install it on my 1520, but not on my Lumia Icon. So depending on what phone you're using, your mileage may vary, but I would wholly expect Microsoft to be updating the roster of phones supported by this app very soon, at least far sooner than Instagram has started building in support for other phones like Android devices or Windows phone devices, as their version of Hyperlapse is still iOS only. So folks, that's been a quick look at Hyperlapse by Microsoft Research. It's a really fun way to shoot some video or play with video you've already shot. I'll leave some links down below this video where you can find more info on Microsoft Research Hyperlapse, where you can download the apps for both Windows Phone and Android. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my videos on social sites like Reddit and Facebook and Twitter and the Googles Plus. So please, Please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.